A white actor knocks a black colleague out cold in front of hundreds of people, basically by pistol whipping him. These days, a story like that might have some traction, but in 1952, it didn't get any further than a local newspaper. It was all an accident, and it didn't hinder Patrick McGowan's career, because he went on to be a big star in the 1960s. As for Earl Cameron's relationship with him, well, that's interesting. These days, Patrick McGowan is best known for his two 1960s TV shows, Danger Man, known in America as Secret Agent, and his weird, very personal Orwellian science fiction show, The Prisoner, which I fell in love with in the 1980s. I recently watched The Prisoner Puzzle, a question and answer session made for Canadian television in 1977, in which he lives up to his image as an idiosyncratic, wayward, feisty, paranoid oddball. And I just thought to myself, can you imagine this guy on social media? With oneself and with progress, uh, I think we're going to take good care of this planet shortly. They're making bigger and better bombs, faster planes, and all this stuff one day, I hate to say it, there's never been a weapon created yet on the face of the earth that hasn't been used. And that thing's going to be used. Unless, I don't know how we're going to stop it now. It's too late, I think. Do you think maybe there's going to be a, a strong popular reaction against, quote, progress in the future? No. Because uh, we're run by the Pentagon. We're run by Madison Avenue. We're run by television. Uh, and as long as we accept those things and don't revolt, uh, we'll have to go along with the stream to the eventual, eventual avalanche. Clearly, he was a man with very strong views about how the world was run. He was also a strict Catholic, which is supposedly why he turned down the role of James Bond, who knows? It's certainly true that even in fiction, he wouldn't kiss any woman who wasn't his wife. And if you look through newspaper archives, as I enjoy doing, it's fascinating to see what he was doing in Coventry in the early 50s, a city in the English Midlands that had been absolutely pummeled by the Luftwaffe during the Blitz. As well as production photos, you can find this image of him meeting the mayor of Coventry, Alderman Gardner. Maybe I'm reading too much into this, but he's standing at the back, giving him a suspicious look, as if to say... Who is this official whom I and members of the Midland Theatre Company are obliged to meet? Al Cameron, on the other hand, was a guy from Bermuda who'd come over to the UK in the late 40s. He'd been in the British Merchant Navy, he'd worked as a dishwasher in London for a time, and he'd kind of fallen into acting. He found his niche there because there weren't a lot of black actors in Britain at the time, and he turned out to have a natural talent. His big break was in director Basil Dearden's 1951 film, Pool of London, in which he plays a merchant seaman who strikes up a close friendship with a white British woman. He then was the lead in a West End play called Deep Are the Roots, which is about an African-American serviceman who returns to his home in the US and has a relationship with a white woman. The play went on tour, and in 1952, it was in Coventry. Here's what happened, according to the local press. I quote, Earl Cameron, distinguished coloured film and stage star, who was appearing with the Midland Theatre Company this week in the Colour Bar play, Deep Are the Roots, was knocked unconscious on Monday night, in full view of the audience. No one realised when he was carried off the stage at the end of the second act, that he was not acting, but was in fact insensible. The scene, in which he plays a returned war hero, being framed for a theft he did not commit, ends with the arrival of the sheriff, played by Patrick McGowan, and his deputies John Ringham and Hugh Matthias. The report goes on to say that he was quite accidentally knocked out with the butt of the gun, and had to be revived with brandy backstage. It was just one of those things, it was a mishap, and there seemed to have been no hard feelings between the two men. A decade later, the two of them worked together on several episodes of Danger Man, 
where Cameron tended to play African dignitaries. Yeah, I was in at least six, maybe seven of them, I can't remember, but at least six, I remember. And I, of course, I had worked with Patrick McEwen in Rapture Theatre many years ago. We more or less knew each other. We were far from good friends, I mean, you know, but because Patrick McGowan was a first class actor. Uh, and uh, in Danger Man was nice, and I think he was always happy to see me uh, turn up from time to time. One of, the, one of the things that always got on very well with him. He crops up again in one episode of The Prisoner, The Schizoid Man, playing the African sidekick to number two, the sinister boss of the village that McGowan's character is trapped in. Now, it seems from another video on YouTube, where Cameron is interviewed about the prisoner, that he was there largely because of the script editor, George Markstein, and that McGowan had reservations about an African character being there. I'm not insinuating anything, I'm not suggesting that he was racist, I'm just saying that apparently he thought that an African character didn't fit into the Cold War setup that the series was alluding to. I think Patrick McGowan felt that... Uh uh, it, it was out of place to have a black actor in that series because, because I would disagree with them completely. But George Mark. However, it is interesting that 40 years later, in 2007, at an event in Port Merion, Wales, where the show had been filmed, Cameron said this I had worked with Patrick McGowan before, so I knew him well enough, as well as anyone can know him. He was a nice guy, but strange. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider liking, subscribing and commenting. In the meantime, be seeing you.